Okay, yep, yeah, it's uh, it's your meeting there, Libby. Okay, thank you. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to Doug, our guest. We'll get thank to the survey. Um, first thing we need is um, the approval of the agenda and the uh, one change that I would like to make, I guess everybody got Megan's email for the next three months. I think she's going to be either, you know, joining us late, leaving early, I, I think is what it is. So I thought we could move her up a little in the uh, agenda under business, if that's okay with everyone, we can sort of do that for the next few weeks. So it, she would be, uh, today, she would be item 6.1. Uh, and then we would move the rest down. So if that's okay with everyone. Then I need a mover and a seconder for that. Sure. I'll move, okay, thank you. Um, any any declaration of conflict of interest from anyone from what you see on the agenda? So hearing none, the approval of the minutes of January 7th. Um, sure. Economic Development Advisor Committee. I also need a mover and a seconder for that. I'll move. I'll move, Libby. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. Seconder, please. I'll second it. Ron. And so we'll go straight to delegations and welcome <laughs> to Doug Stevenson, Executive Director of the Bay of Quinty. I'm going to read this, make sure I get it right. The Bay of Quinty Regional Marketing Board. Um, <laughs> a longtime friend and former colleague of mine when I was in my tourism days with RTO9. Um, thank you for joining us this morning, Doug. And you bet. And looking forward to your, your presentation and to what's going on in these weird times with uh, Bay Aquinnah Marketing Board and, and how that might apply to uh, our municipality. So, so welcome again and uh, take it away. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'm just gonna share my screen here. Bring this up. Everybody see that? Yes. Terrific. Okay, well, uh, as Libby alluded to, and as we already know, it has been uh, an interesting ride, you know, almost a year into this thing, uh, which is incredible. Um, but we were talking a little bit uh, off the top about some tourism success. And actually, it turns out, I mean, it was a challenging year. And, and that's no doubt, but it turns out our region and our assets actually set up quite well for COVID-19, uh, especially in comparison to other regions. You know, when we look at the CBRE uh, National Hotel data, and the most recent data is always a couple of months behind, so we've got through the balance of November 2020, we're actually not quite down 9%, which is really impressive when we hold ourselves up against the average uh, for the rest of RTO9, um, which most were over 20%. You know, Kingston was in the high 20s in terms of being down. So uh, when we compare ourselves even to the national report, uh, the communities in, in the, the national data, we're actually fourth in occupancy rate. So, and, and one of the best in terms of um, uh, low losses. So, uh, you know, yeah, it was a very challenging year, but I think there were still some positives to bring. And, and this idea of, you know, green space, affordability, waterfront, a safe community, those were all a big deal for us this past year with COVID-19. Let's not forget in the heat of the summer, when we were getting strong Toronto visitation, strong Ottawa, strong Quebec visitation, we actually had zero travel cases. So that's a plus two when we look at how our businesses in this region, uh, you know, um, implemented COVID-19 protocols. And, and the same has been true from a resident attraction point of view. When we look at real estate data from Quinney District Association of Realtors, which encompasses the entire region down into Prince Edward County and up into Hastings County, it's been a banner year. We also set up uh, very well for people leaving the city and looking for a place of refuge. And when you speak to a lot of these agents, they will tell you there was a surge of outside buyers, more so than in previous years. People who were literally looking to get out of a city and come to a safer community that was more affordable. So, you know, the, the data um, from 2020 shows sales are up 14% from 2019. And let me tell you, 2019 was a strong year. 
Um, and dollar volume is up significantly when average price is only up about half of the dollar volume. So, so that uh, shows us something as well. And, you know, uh, that's a good feeling for us. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to be done, but our two main marketing mandates are tourism and resident attraction. So to be able to see data like this come out that we're a part of is, again, a positive that we can bring out of 2020, even though it's been very challenging. And that's all been made possible by this partnership. This partnership is a strong one. And, you know, we were really excited uh, when Brighton wanted to come on board a few years ago. And it's just been terrific working uh, with you folks, with council, working with Ben. Uh, you know, there's probably not two weeks that go by where Ben and I aren't on the phone chatting about this, that, or the other. And it's been really interesting to see him take over that portfolio, own it, really start to grow it. And, uh, you know, you don't need to look hard <laughs> to see a lot of what's happened through the work that he's done since he's been in that position. Uh, and that's ultimately made our job much easier because if, if we have questions or discussions around Brighton, you know, Ben's got the answer, which has uh, been terrific for me and my team. Of course, we're guided and governed by our, our board of directors. So every community that pays into this partnership gets a seat at the table. Your own uh, Laura Vink uh, represents you around the board. And then we've got a few at-large positions as well, as well. And here's the team. So uh, myself, Trevor Norris, who's our business development manager. Jen Achilles, she's our manager of media design. And, and Courtney Klumper, our digital marketing manager. This is the the Bay Quinney Regional Marketing Board team. I love working with these folks every day. And, um, you know, it's, it's also been terrific to uh, have them interacting with Ben and learning more about Brighton and representing your municipality as part of this partnership as well. So when we look at um, our funding for this past year, uh, working with just shy of $700,000, uh, we were really fortunate to have received significant chunk of federal funding through what was called the Regional Recovery and Relief Fund, RRRF. Um, and this was for destination marketing organizations specifically, like ours, uh, largely because so many of them, like us, derive a big chunk of funding from what's called municipal accommodation tax. So this uh, tax levy uh, with hotels or uh, other accommodations um, and you'll see, you know, for example, Belleville and Quinney West, they've implemented this municipal accommodation tax. So we were able to derive some good dollars from them this year, but it was actually only about half of what we would expect in a typical year. Um, so to get that funding was huge for us. You'll see Brighton at the top there. So uh, your community pays a per capita uh, fee. So $1.55 per person, according to the most recent census in 2016. So uh, that's worth $18,358, so around 2.7% of our total funding. And when we look at, you know, how we roll out this partnership, it's all about support. It, again, it's conversations with Ben, you know, what can we be doing to support Brighton? What are you implementing through the year that we can be a part of? Uh, sometimes this is financial. <clears throat> so, you know, rolling out your shop local campaign and us contributing to that. Or uh, I love this piece uh, that Ben did in uh, Horizon Travel, a really popular uh, tourism publication in Ontario. And, you know, we partnered with him on that in order to do uh, a $500, <clears throat> excuse me, a vacation getaway. But it's also the in-kind stuff. Uh, so, you know, uh, Ben implemented the passport program called me up. Hey, could you come down and do a video with me to help kick this thing off and, and be a part of the other uh, videos that we're doing. And I love that stuff. Being a part of uh, supporting our partners in kind is, is a big part of what we do. And, you know, similarly, we went down, we shot some video in Brighton. This one down here in the lower right corner is a time-lapse video we did in the downtown just to, you know, generate awareness of here is the downtown. Here's what's here. Here's the buzz. Uh, and you can see things like this are doing really well on Brighton social media, which is even better. But it's also product support. And a lot of this is led uh, through our social and digital networks. You know, we're now communicating with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a following of over 50,000, which is really exciting for us. Um, that's things like you've seen every day, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. 
Uh, we're also sharing on LinkedIn. We're growing our YouTube channel. We actually blew it up this year and started over. Uh, our tourism and industry newsletters have grown quite a bit this year. Uh, actually, we just started our industry newsletter in 2020, and we've already got almost 1,000 subscribers. The tourism newsletter doubled in subscribers this year. And so again, on social media, you know, we're doing things like video. Facebook Live has been a, a really terrific tool for us. Facebook gives it preferential treatment and its algorithm. So it, it wants to push those live videos out. So we, we did a, a big campaign of those through the, through the summer and into the fall as part of what we called must do in BOQ. So getting out and about, here we are at Cricklewood. Um, but it's also, you know, uh, things like Instagram in the top right corner there which is just led by beautiful visuals. And Instagram is actually our fastest growing uh, social media account. And uh, something that I know Ben has been thinking about implementing with Brighton once resources are in place uh, that would allow him to take that on. And I think that's a, a terrific growth opportunity for your, your municipality, especially when it comes we're, to-, to We're tourism. up and running now. Doug. Oh, you are? Instagram. Perfect. Yeah. Amazing. Over 400 awesome. followers already. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the thing. It's, it's really growing. Uh, because people are, you know, migrating from places like Facebook onto Instagram. Uh, we drive a lot through our web, especially through uh, blogs. So just telling different stories month to month. What's going on? Uh, you know, as a result of COVID-19, we created a new series called Making It Work. So it was, uh, we came up with the name from the, the song, you know, Making It Work Takes a Little Longer. Uh, Doug and the Slugs, I believe, which is obviously a favorite of mine. Um, but we were just featuring different businesses. How are you making it work during COVID-19? What are you doing? And, you know, Bobby down there in, in the lower right, she was one of the first ones we learned of in Brighton who went online, who was doing porch pickup. You know, uh, we created a series called Doug's Doorstep Deliveries in the early days, uh, March, April, May of 2020. And she was one of our first stops. So, uh, that, that's been a really good feature for us to show different angles of businesses in our community. And on the resident attraction side, we always are trying to use jobs uh, in order to attract people here. We use quinnyjobs.ca and subsequent digital media channels uh, to try and attract people here with jobs that are typically paying, you know, 50,000 or above, something that's going to want to, uh, something that's going to attract people to move here, you know, be able to afford a mortgage, afford their other payments. Uh, and of course, our discovery guide. And we just went to print with our new guide. Uh, here's a couple of features that you'll see come out. Again, we're telling stories just across the region, uh, printing 20,000 copies, distributing them, you know, in our target markets, especially Toronto, Ottawa, uh, but also here locally, because ultimately we get about, um, you know, uh, uh, a good 50% of our travelers staying in hotels. Uh, and other accommodations here. So we will try and get them in the rooms, get them in the lobbies. Uh, so that'll be a strong tool for us again this year because we took a break last year. And as part of that, we're often hiring writers just to come in and write about the community. So, you know, here's one, for example, we did in the fall. It's a group called Justin plus Lauren, pretty big in the Ontario tourism community, invited them here. Uh, they stayed in Brighton uh, and, and, and wrote about the, the region. Uh, we also do a photography program. So, you know, we say to Ben, what do you need? And uh, here's some examples, you know, patios like the duck, downtowns, getting inside uh, at the lighthouse books, for example, getting out, showing the trails side of things over at Proctor Park. Um, and, you know, Sherry, I saw your email and, and hopefully we're able yeah. to help you with some of that as well. Uh, this Thank is you. why we do that stuff, right? To have a repository so that, when somebody is looking for photos, we've got them ready to go. Or Ben can use them on his social media or on your website. And similarly, uh, you know, we uh, implemented a lot of digital campaigns this year. Uh, one of them being a staycation sweepstakes. We gave away a $500 staycation every week for eight weeks and uh, had some terrific engagement through that. And we actually, we gave the staycation to each of our partners uh, for a week as well. So Brighton took it over for a week. You know, look at the engagement. Ben's getting there almost 10%, uh, reaching over 10,000, which is uh, really terrific. And, uh, you know, again, shows uh, what a partnership can do. We can kind of elevate the network 
And uh, the step further is, you know, businesses supported. So uh, uh, almost 30 businesses supported uh, through the spending. People like this woman, Vanda Spencer, she did a Brighton staycation. You know, she's saying here she had great time at her Brighton staycation. Sunflower Health, a great place. Whistling Duck, really nice, good food. Sobeys always has everything I want. Timber House Resort, a very nice and friendly place to stay. Enjoyed our evening with live music and wonderful breakfast. And bought a few things in a couple other stores in Brighton too. So that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to get people out in the community, spending some money that's coming in through our budget so that we're infusing it back into the small businesses. And we'll be planning to do something like that again um, when restrictions lift as we get into the spring. And uh, also one, uh, you know, Paula Mason reached out to us uh, in, the, in the fall and asked if we could put a video together for her in terms of doctor recruitment for Brighton Quinney West. I understand Ben showed that to council recently. So we were really happy to play a part in that. And I, I think the end product was a strong one and uh, will be really helpful tool for Paula. She's already used it last Friday. She had a session um, where she made presentation to I think almost 20 potential docs uh, over Zoom, her first Zoom presentation. And so I know that was an interesting experience for her, but great to have the video for. And then uh, most recently, because of COVID as well, we created what we called the Bay Quinney Marketing Grants. So these were grants, you know, for small businesses and community organizations uh, in order to support them with their marketing during COVID-19. So we gave away $55,000 in grants to 26 organizations, uh, one of them being the Brighton uh, and Cranby District uh, Chamber of Commerce. So we're excited to have Sherry be a part of that. So $3,500 for the development of a new self-guided history tour map product. And Ben and I were on a call with Sherry recently to hear more about it. It's gonna be an exciting project and uh, it's gonna look really slick and it's gonna be something new for visitors to come in and do and, you know, because it's self-guided, uh, it's going to be excellent because they can do it on their own terms. Uh, so that'll be another marketing tool as well for us, for Ben, for Sherry, uh, to hopefully get people out and experiencing the region. So we're almost done here. Uh, just next steps. We're currently uh, working on our 21-22 business plan and budget. We're not asking for a funding request. You know, when we first discussed this partnership with council, uh, we actually agreed on an MOU that would increase incrementally, incrementally year over year. Um, with Belleville and Quinney West introducing their municipal accommodation tax, the feeling was we didn't want to look at increasing per capita. And so as a result, the equitable approach that we try and take with the communities across our partnership is each community should be paying the same amount from a per capita perspective. And so we're not asking for an increase this year. We're gonna to continue to focus on local for the time being. Uh, one thing we are rolling out just after Valentine's Day is our summer golf overnight ca uh, package campaign. Timber uh, Ridge is a part of that one. Um, we're gonna get into another round of the marketing grants, spring marketing grants. And Ben and I have been chatting. We wanna uh, try and get increased applications from Brighton. You know, we had three uh, in the last round. Let's get that number up. We'd love to see an application from the BIA, for example, on some sort of marketing campaign that we could be a part of supporting because, you know, if, if the BIA is taking a more active role with respect to visitor marketing, that's just going to buoy all of us. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pump up Brighton, but it's going to pump up our region as well. We're currently uh, working to develop an experiential and product development strategy. Uh, so right now we're in the asset mapping phase and we're going to create a list of the experiences we've got, what's emerging, uh, wh where the potentials are. We're going to create clusters as well, you know, retail, waterfront, outdoor. And then we're going to bring in experts from across this province to work with those clusters to try and build them up. We're rebuilding our website this year, which is going to be a big project. Um, I've spoken with Ben. I'd love to discuss further the potential for municipal accommodation tax in Brighton. You know, my calculations show that it could generate over $100,000 in a typical year, uh, which if we were selected as the not-for-profit tourism organization to get the other half would mean, you know, you folks would get 50 grand 
more or less, we'd get 50 grand more or less to grow our tourism marketing budgets and potential. And then we're going to continue to develop these partnerships. So like I said, off the top, and we all know this is still a fairly new partnership. But I think we've come a long way, especially getting Ben in that position. Uh, it was perfect timing. Um, we work well together. I think we've come a long way, but there's still a lot of room to grow. And uh, like I said, you know, Ben's implemented a lot of uh, marketing foundational pieces. You know, it's great to hear he's, he's got the Instagram up and running, for example. And so now we can work together to build those things. So, uh, you know, ultimately we want to get back to growing the overnight success, growing that resident attraction success, and uh, hopefully seeing 2021 be a bit more normalized. But if it's not, we're prepared to deal with it. Um, anyway, that's it for me. Thanks on behalf of the entire team, because I'm the one here speaking with you today, but they're all working hard somewhere else. Uh, happy to take any questions or have discussion. And uh, if anybody wants to reach out with me uh, to me um, individually, please feel free at any time. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thanks, Doug. Uh, do you have time for a question or two? Yeah, you bet. Okay, so um, comment first. Did I read that you are receiving an award from Medco for a video? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so oh, we, um, we produced a documentary yeah. about immigration to this region. Right. Uh, I don't think people really realize the degree to which it's occurring, right? Um, but new Canadians are loving this place for the same reason, you know, I love that I moved to this place. It's, it's beautiful. It's affordable. There are jobs. And so, yeah, we were fortunate enough to have been recognized by the Economic Development Council of Ontario with an award uh, of excellence in their resident attraction. Um, That's awesome. Category. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. So my question is, is this, or in an observation, I suppose, at Presque Park this summer, it was a booming year for tourists. And part of that was because the beach in Coburg wasn't open, so people were coming here. But on the weekends, locals didn't even bother to go to the park because there was just such a queue to get into the park. Is there anything that you think that we can do that can capitalize on that? I know, you know it's bringing people here and maybe they, they'll say, this might be a good place to open a business or this might, you know, going from tourism to economic development, this might be a good place to open a business or this might be a good place to live. I think housing sales would show that that actually yeah. did happen this year. Um, is there anything else that, you know, is there anything that we can do as a municipality um, to capitalize on that? Oh yeah, I think so. I mean, it could be simple things like signage, right? That direct people when they're finding out they either can't go to the park or they need to go somewhere else. But, you know, there are also digital tools that we could use. So, for example, we work with an organization called Big Click Inc. Uh, they're actually out of Coburg, Port Hope. And what they could do through us even uh, is do what's called geofencing Presque Isle. And so that's where on a digital program, you just draw a little uh, circle around the park and people who are in there, as long as they've got one of these, which, oh, gee, I find most people have one of these, uh, we could actually start sending them messages, you know, to say, well, you've been to the park or you're leaving the park. Here's, here are other things you can be doing. And that's as simple as, you know, a top 10 list, right? Listicles are a very uh, eye-catching thing. Um, they're easy to implement. We could come up with one probably with this group, you know, in a matter of seconds. Uh, but I think it goes a step further too. And you might've seen Libby, Prince Edward County is currently working on an over-tourism strategy. They've hired a consultancy named Bannikin to implement this. Uh, so we should keep an eye on what they're doing because they've spent significant time thinking about this. They've got a, a, a problem really there. Um, but I think it all comes down to partnerships. And that's where, you know, Sherry and her group, the BIA, Ben hitting the streets, speaking with people and saying, educating them. And maybe again, it's a takeaway print piece, which we could also be a part of developing or, and helping to pay for. So that when somebody leaves the park and maybe they're frustrated, you know, but they pop into a restaurant XYZ to grab a coffee, the person at that desk has that customer service training saying, hey, here's what's going on this week, or here's what you could also check out. You know, uh, even to people who don't exhibit signs of frustration and come in huffing and puffing, 
these are things that, you know, I'm sure Ron would have implemented with his staff at the front desk, right? Somebody comes in, it's just automatic. By the way, here's this thing that tells you everything else that can be done. So I think there are multiple levels and a lot of it probably just comes down to communication and, and we'd be happy to play a role in that. Well, I, I really love, did you call it geofencing? Yeah. You call it? Yeah, I love that idea. Okay, well, we'll leave that to to you and Ben. Sure. Um, that, that's all that I had. Any other questions from anybody? Yes, I do. I have one. I'm curious to know, you talked about the um, spring marketing grants. When, when will you launch that? Is that in I, April? I think it'll be April, yeah. Well, our new budget will start April 1st, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm pretty sure we'll want to launch it soon after so that if we can we can get it out there as soon as possible so folks can get moving on grants you know in time for summer season thanks yeah madam chair may i yes thank you uh <laughs> Doug, are you aware of the county northumberland county's um uh, tourism initiatives yeah, there's a there's a there's a new push at the moment. Uh, are, are you are you at that table? So we've uh, reached out to the county about collaboration. And um, I mean, I, I think they're open to chatting about things, but we haven't really seen a lot of interest in strong collaborations. I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll push. I'll, I'll keep pushing on that. OK, thank you. I mean, there's, there's this real sense from a county point of view that the world ends at Walt Street and or maybe, <laughs> maybe somewhere in Colburn, I'm not sure, but. <laughs> Run to the way. Right. Uh, so I'll keep pushing on that because I think, you know, the, the things you're doing are, are, are incredibly innovative and uh, sometimes the things that come out of the county are less innovative. And so I'd like to, uh, to make sure that at the very least they're, they're hearing your your enthusiasm and uh, are able to maybe chunk a piece off of some ideas and, and make those roll. But also not, not um, <clears throat> there's no need to duplicate efforts, right? I sure. mean, you're, you're doing some good work for Brighton. And if, uh, if the county can leverage that and, and, you know, help get you to help with that, then, then let's do that. I'll, I'll have a chat with Dan Borowak. Sure. We're up for working with anybody anytime. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say uh, if I could jump in, uh, Libby, um, it's a, it's a really it's a really amazing working relationship that we have with Doug's group. Um, Doug listed like all of the kind of the value and the services that that they provide uh, to us, but one of the things he didn't really uh, talk about was basically uh, the free consulting services I almost exploit out of Doug and his group. And he's got a graphic design team on hand um, that's very talented. And he's got a uh, business development manager, Trevor uh, Norris, that's extremely uh, well-connected and has great ideas. So, and not even to mention Doug's skill set. So for me to be able to pick up the phone and call down to their office or call Doug's cell phone directly um, is just a huge, uh, huge value system that the information and the advice I get out of them, uh, we'd be paying, you know, 50000 dollars for a year if it were an actual tourism consultant. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's just one thing that you can't even really put a put a price on that that we have. Uh, that we have uh, access to, and uh, now that uh, now that uh, I'm, I've been in the chair for over a year, uh, we've been able to connect some connect some dots, and I, I get the strong sense Sherry's going to leverage Doug that much more, and uh, the DBIA is going to leverage uh, this group as well that much more, and that's what they're there for. And uh, totally, um, just the the partnerships that have come out of the last year in such a difficult time. Um, yeah, we can put some dollar amounts on it, but uh, I think just some of these tour tourism based businesses that rely on visitors, just having the sense of or the common mind to know that uh, there is organizations out there helping people uh, come to the community, I think is, is a, is a huge, uh, is a huge thing. So just wanted to kind of add those few comments, no real questions, but uh, 
just want to give my perspective on how this uh, relationship works. Thanks, Ben. Um, well, it's like Doug was saying about partnerships. I mean, that's that's how we're all going to succeed in this, and hopefully, we can get at the Northumberland table. That would be a, a that would be a positive thing. Um, are there any other questions or comments for Doug? Can I? I just want to make a a comment, I guess, more than a question. Um, and it just goes back to what the mayor was saying about working more closely with Northumberland County. Can I make a suggestion? I don't know what your lineup is like for us in the future, but perhaps Dan Borowick or Eileen Lum or someone from the Entrepreneurship Center come and, and talk to us in the near future about what's happening from that direction as well. Um, I know at the chamber, I spend a lot of time trying to connect the dots and get partners on the same page and figure out where I can reach for different types of supports. We're eternally grateful for your help with the map, Doug. And, you know, I'm already looking forward to what are we doing next with Good. that. Um, I, actually, I do have a list now of the historical sites that Brighton Digital Archives is recommending we profile. So. Awesome. I'm probably going to work with Tom to get that sent out to everybody after we meet here today, just so that I can get some feedback on what everyone thinks. But that's just a comment, Ben. I'm wondering yeah. if North County could be next yeah. for us. It's going to be a constant rotation. So basically every meeting you can be ready for one of our partners to do to be doing this. So next time it could be Rob Day, it could be Eileen, it could be Dan. Um, and, you know, the idea will be that Doug comes on like twice, three times a year. Chris King will be on twice, three times a year. So it'll be that constant, that constant rotation. So as much as this committee wants results and wants to see new things, it's, it's really that information share that to me is, is the biggest part of, the, part of this. And uh, the information Doug shared today now gets to your group and gets to Megan and Emily's group and, and, and works itself into the community through Libby and Mike and uh, um, through Ron and the mayor as well that, that gets the information into council. So um, we're gonna continue that for sure with Northumberland, our Northumberland County partners as well. Perfect, thank you. Okay, any other comments before we let Doug go? I do. I mean, if he wants to go, he's welcome to stay. <laughs> Just before Doug leaves, if he's planning to, Doug, thank you very much for everything you do. Oh, and, you're welcome. Um, please keep, uh, sending information to us so we can get it in front of council. Um, there, there, is, there are some voices at the table who will continually question our involvement with, uh, with your organization, as, as I'm sure you, you're, you're well aware. Um, but there, you, have, you have three, four, maybe five champions at the table who will That's great. continue to support our involvement and our partnership with the Bay of Quinney group and and the work you do is important to our community especially especially right now as we enter a, 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 a an unquestionably weird period of, <laughs> of economic recovery so sure yeah uh, keep up the good work thank you very much thanks yeah well, uh, thank I you has... um, yeah i was I just gonna advice. say we get the last comment to Ron. am i not on here <laughs> yeah you are <laughs> <laughs> Ron. <laughs> doug i'm gonna go with you all right and then we'll talk up at sure later. yeah um I, my question is, uh, or actually, I'm a, the accommodation tax. I was involved in that when it first started in, in yeah. Melville with Ryan and the, the gang. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it's time we look at it strongly for Bell, uh, for this area too, Brighton. Um, you know, when you think of accommodation in Brighton, you really, really go, oh, where? You know? But when you look at the, all the air, these are, this money would be coming from Airbnbs and bed and breakfasts and all, yeah. right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, when you look at the Airbnb sector in Brighton, it's growing pretty strong. Oh, and that is that is something we've been discussing a lot lately. Now, I'm not talking about sending a notice out this week and saying uh, <laughs> you're going to start paying tax. And they, haven't, and they haven't got anybody in there to, to any revenues coming in now. But I think when we come out of this and we will come out with probably in a, when when it's opened up and when it, uh, you're going to see. Uh, a lot of people getting out and traveling in this area yeah. uh, and uh, from all over the place, not just not just from Toronto and not just. And I think people think business will be so good in the hotels, in accommodation, 
because people will be on the move because they've been hunkered down for two years or a year or whatever. So whenever it is, that would be a good thing to have things in place for timing to to introduce it. I don't think introducing it right now would be a very no. popular thing for the municipality of Brighton. But yeah, I agree uh, with that. You agree with that? Yeah. So yeah, perhaps I can talk that over with some people, uh, some with this committee even further, and see if it's something that we can bring forward to uh, in our in our plan or some our strategic plan or. We're going to be yeah. talking about that again soon. So, uh, I like that. I West implemented there's a them. lot of money there that could be put back into the community for tourism ourselves now and rely on you too. And one last question: federal money was great. I think it was two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Was yeah. that right? Through various programs. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see anything from the province in there. The province doesn't contribute to tourism at that level. So what happens with the province and Libby would know the way this works is it gets filtered down to those RTOs, the regional tourism. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And each of them has a program. So uh, we actually did. I didn't include it in that funding slide because it's not funding per se. They don't give us money. What they do is they match dollars. So we actually got, I think it was 25,500 in matching dollars from them. So that uh, experiential tourism strategy, for example, we gave them 10,500, they matched it with another 10,500. We, we, so we doubled our cash and we're able to work with more organizations, you know, a, a better consultant, do a little bit more work, leverage more that way. So we no. do receive, receive funding at a provincial level it just doesn't come directly into our bank account. No, I had forgotten that. That's true. It's been that way for years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if I could just go back a step to the municipal accommodation tax, don't forget uh, that's one of the advantages of the partnership as well, right? Uh, you know, at a municipal level, from a bylaw perspective, Belleville and Quinney West have gone through all the hard work. You know, we can reach out to them uh, to ask them how they did it. And they, to your point, Ron, they both implemented with the July 1st start date, the year that they implemented. Same thinking. We're not going to want to implement it in, through the winter or in the spring. We're going to want to implement it the day that people are really coming here and, and there's, you know, momentum going through. Uh, initially, anyway, just... in, initially, 10 years ago, whenever it was, that's what we did. We did we yeah. was July 1st when we started it. So. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but certainly we can leverage our community partners through Belleville and Quinney West when you get to that point. Okay, good. Thanks, I'm then. here for for a resource as well. There'll be some kickback on that, but uh, it's certainly worth investigating. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Doc. Thanks very much for for joining us this morning and letting us know all the impressive things that you're doing. And well, uh, like Ben said, we'll I guess we'll see you again in a few months' time. Hopefully, I can't wait. Okay. Thank okay. You. We'll talk to you soon, everybody. I'm going to take off. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. Bye. So uh, the next item under new business, if we have moved Megan up to um, item 6.1, she's next to bring a DBIA update. And I believe I don't see her picture, which means she's probably joining by phone. Are you there, Megan? You're looks like you're muted right now. Sorry, guys. I have like the worst internet connection for downtown Brighton. And like, I, I have to leave my camera off because if I don't, I mean, like now Libby, you're like frozen for me. It's been really bad. It's been really bad this winter. Okay, um, well, if we can if we can get you to uh, yeah. to bring your report and, and yeah. hopefully things will clear up soon. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so sorry. Are you there? No. Okay, we got you back. Got you back. Megan? Yeah, hi. <laughs> okay, go ahead with your report. Okay, yeah. sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, so uh, I had informed the DBIA about what we had discussed here about reaching out to businesses, possibly figuring out um, that was pretty much the main thing on the docket for the last meeting. Um, I did have to dip out of that meeting because my internet connection was so bad, nobody could hear anything I was saying. Um, so I just kind of blurted it out really quickly. So I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> uh, 
I spoke to Phil Lawrence and he put me in touch with his assistant, Ralph, who I'm going to kind of talk to, I suppose, more. Um, I guess Ralph is just more readily available. They are interested in getting involved um, and they are uh, they do want to know what the small businesses in town have been struggling with um, when it comes to COVID relief and COVID just assistance, like in any way, like, you know, emotionally, monetarily, how, you know, where where are the pitfalls, right? Um, so I made a list. Um, I basically broke down the wonderful list that Sherry um, shared with me uh, through the Chamber of Commerce. They have a nice big list of all the businesses. Um, and essentially the logic I use, because there are so many businesses on there for one person to reach out to, um, I broke the list down by uh, what I deemed like non-essential businesses and essential bit or like not what I deemed but I you know what I thought would be considered essential and non-essential I did not I intentionally did not reach out to trades people right off the bat because I feel like the trade um haven't really been affected by the COVID thing um you know because people are always going to need plumbers they're always going to need electricians etc cetera, etc cetera. um so I haven't gotten around to phoning everybody but I've gotten through about maybe uh, 30% of them. And, uh, I have discovered a couple things. Um, one of those things was did not, um, some people have actually not been affected really at all. And if anything, COVID has actually like benefited their businesses because they're in the business of like, um, sort of like hobbyist, hobbyist, like I spoke to the birdhouse, right. And she was telling me that, uh, you know, because of COVID, people are really into bird watching now. Um, so that's been, uh, that's been great. Um, I think I'm losing you guys. So I'm just going to hold off before I say too much more. Um, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yes. You're, yep. you're good. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I phoned around. It seems like the, the retail non hobby related or non sort of a I guess pastime related retail has been hit pretty, pretty hard. Um, the people who aren't struggling with it um, are just really excellent organizers and time delegators. They've got really good um, time management and they've even admitted that that saved them. Um, but then there's other people who are struggling um, almost from like a bureaucratic standpoint. Um, I've spoken to a few businesses that feel very um, frustrated that they kind of don't have a singular point of contact that they feel like they can get the answers that they need from. Um, so uh, I asked, I, I guess I, I should say, I asked every business the same five questions. One, what their, what their sector was. Two, if they were deemed essential or non-essential and why. Um, three was if their businesses had been affected by the pandemic. Uh, four was if they received any funding. If yes, what did you receive? And if no, were you told why you didn't receive it? Um, and then the fifth question was if you could uh, see sort of any kind of assistance for other small businesses, what would you like to see? Um, and the answers have been pretty interesting. So for that fifth question, um, it, it's pretty much unanimously been different, but all kind of hovering around the same point. Um, a lot of what I've heard is uh, some kind of like cash in hand or even um, just info informative assistance program that uh, tells people or tells business owners how they can go about getting more of an online presence. And I, I mean, like even the people who didn't agree that, you know, um, that uh, that online presence is what saved them in the end. They did think that it was important for other businesses to be online in some capacity, whether it's social media or being, you know, uh, having a website or just some kind of online entity. And actually, uh, Bobby from the Birdhouse um, was super informative. I didn't really realize how hard they've been pushing this online shopping mall. Sherry obviously would know a lot about that um, with the chamber and kind of more stuff like that, I think. Uh, Bobby told me that um, for her, ultimately, it was... Um, a huge help to be able to have kind of the uh, assistance and infrastructure to take her shop more online. That's really what's helped her get through a lot of this, um, which I thought was a really interesting finding, probably the most interesting one I've come across. And then the second 
kind of most prevalent um, issue that was broached with me was that uh, some people are just being met with a lot of um, just assistance, I guess, uh, uh, or sorry, not assistance, resistance from a bureaucratic standpoint. Um, they're applying to things, but because it's through um, many, many channels, they're not really getting uh, clear answers back. You know, it, it's difficult. And they're writing out to different representatives like Phil Lawrence and David Puccini. They're trying to get answers. Um, and those people just want to be able to have some kind of open forum with folks like Phil Lawrence and David Puccini, maybe once in a while to be able to like talk to them, I guess, or get their answers straight from the horse's mouth. Um, so that kind of falls in line with, I, I suppose, what we were talking about in the last meeting where, you know, if we were going to do some kind of, you know, Zoom call or something where we had um, these sort of information sessions, I guess that kind of falls in line with who people are interested in talking to. Um, so that's pretty much what I found out. Again, I have not called all the businesses. There's a lot of them. Um, so I kind of just tried to whittle it down to uh, a more manageable number. I'm still going to keep phoning them because I'm I am truly interested in what they have to say. And I think that, you know, getting a huge um, kind of panel of perspectives. It's been very interesting, actually. The perspectives have been very nuanced and different from the next. I was shocked that some businesses actually weren't struggling because of, you know, COVID. And I was shocked at other ones that were struggling. So it's been uh, very informative. I'd like to put together like a formal package when I'm done reaching out, um, just so that we can see kind of where, maybe if there's patterns of where people have been hit hard and if there's patterns, you know, what is it indicative of? Is it because they're not online? Is it because, um, you know, maybe they're not uh, going through the right channels or avenues. Uh, I think ultimately the people who have been struggling, it's an issue of like not really knowing what's been going on. And so I think that the information sessions, again, that we've discussed in previous meetings would be helpful, even to people who haven't struggled. Um, I don't see how that could hurt. <laughs> That's that. Okay. That's, uh, that's it for me. I mean, if anybody has any questions or comments, I'd be happy to maybe answer them to the to the best of my abilities. I, I think it's great what you're doing, Megan. Um, I wasn't aware that you were doing this, and and you're getting some you know some good information. And uh, maybe if anybody else has some time to pitch in, uh, that would be might be helpful to you. I think it's it'll be some great information when. Uh, when, when you get it compiled in the end so mm -hmm. yeah well and I've, I've learned plenty of interest I've learned plenty of interesting things even myself through it um yeah. and I think that the I think that the most important thing with the COVID relief is the dissemination of like accurate information um because I think a lot of people are just they feel kind of like they're just uh you know adrift and at the mercy of like whatever's happening but I do feel like um I mean, it's not because that's not what's happening. I think it's, you know, because maybe in some areas there's just been poor communication. And I mean, there's a lot of channels that people can go through to get the information that they need, um, you know. And I've, I, I chatted with Phil Lawrence about this, about how, you know, there's some information on, you know, the federal websites and then there's some information on the provincial websites and then there's some information on, you know, uh, local development websites and it's just kind of almost too spread out where I guess what I'm trying to do is I'm working towards getting a clear singular picture that we can present to Brighton exclusively and be like and and possibly crammy but um, you know just to show them hey this is what we found this is for Brighton by Brighton you know it's not the Canadian government umbrella trying to reach out to all these people. And two, you know, I, I spoke to another couple of business owners who did say to me that uh, they think that there is a lot of confusion um, with the online thing and that it does need to be streamlined um, a little bit. It needs to be less confusing, which is why, I mean, the chamber mall thing, I think is just makes sense because that is the streamlined thing, right? If we're all in the same place, right? So, I mean, that could be something we 
you know, focus on too. Um, th more initiatives like that. And you're right, if there's, you know, things are moving so fast, but they're also moving really slow and there's a lot yeah. of confusion out there. So it, it's good to have this information. Does anyone have a question for Megan? I, I would like to say something. Yes. Sherry? Yes, Sherry. Um, yeah, just thank you, Megan, for everything that you're doing. Um, I hate to say it, I'm not surprised by anything you're discovering, and you're right. There's a ton of information out there about how businesses can gain assistance to get their get themselves a better online presence. It comes from multiple directions. We've tried as a chamber to get the information out there. Every time we think we've got it out there, it's there's new information. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it's, I'm glad there's new stuff coming all the time. It's clear that the politicians are listening to us when we tell them what we think the gaps are, what we're hearing in the community. Um, I really appreciate your comment about the MP and the MPP having an audience with our local businesses. At the last chamber board meeting, we discussed having the mayors come to a Zoom meeting. Brian, you're mm -hmm. probably gonna get an email in the near future. Um, as soon as budgets are set, it's, it's important <coughs> to really understand the thought process behind that budget and how, what, what it is they can expect from their local municipality. It's mm -hmm. true, the funding seems to be mainly coming from federal, but what, I know what we tried to do as a chamber locally was to pull all of those levels of uh, government together so that we weren't getting duplication. And that might actually explain why there's so many different programs available. I know our municipality hooked up with Quinney West to offer digital Main Street. The Business and Entrepreneurship Center has a digital footprint program. And both of those programs actually have funding available. Um, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you privately yeah. about all of this, Megan. Yeah. But, so we, I mean, I, I, we absolutely saw the marketplace as something that no one else was doing. Yeah. And I still think that it has a potential if once we get a critical mass of businesses registered onto that marketplace, it has the potential of a truly cooperative and collaborative growth effort because yeah. everybody promoting the same site means that our, biz our, our businesses in our community are all promoting each other. And I yeah. really truly believe that that's what we have to do if we can well, save more businesses if we do that. Yeah. You're so, right. Some, some businesses have had their best year ever and yeah. some have not. Yeah. So I guess um, from my perspective, I would say, so again, I'm very interested in um, like um, in sort of these like social interpersonal relationships in this town. And um, I do, I a hundred percent agree on a completely unrelated topic, just an anecdote off, off my, off my dome here. I was talking to my dad about, um, you know, uh, just just when people diversify charities, when they really should just invest money into like the one overarching thing rather than making all these little pockets. And I feel like if the chamber's already working on these things, which again, Bobby was so informative. I had a great conversation with her. Um, I feel like if the chamber's working on these things, it might make more sense for maybe like an independent person like my, like this is independent research that I'm doing, right? because I have a personal vested interest in this. Um, so it might make sense to, yeah, just like pair up with the work that's already been done to, and I mean, Sherry, we've had, we've, you and I have paired up before on stuff. Um, and, and we have talked about, you know, uh, how that could maybe benefit if we like diversify. I don't know. You know, the answer is a lot more complicated than I realized. It's, um, I mean, a lot of people have, um, what's the word? I'm, a lot of people have reservations based off of past experiences. Not, I'm not saying with the chamber, just I'm saying maybe with dealing with politicians and whatever. And I'd like to try to bridge that gap and create some kind of civil environment where everybody feels safe. And you know what? Even for the politicians, I mean, I don't blame them if they're nervous for coming and speaking before a uh, kind of a bunch of angry, uh, rightfully angry, um, or frustrated business owners. But I, I'm trying to think of a way 
where we can create a forum that is a safe and constructive place for everybody to be heard and everybody to feel like even just a little bit that they were helped. Um, so yeah, Sherry, I'm totally, I, I would totally be down to talk to you about um, that privately because, and you know what, I, I do apologize in advance. If you have told me about the online marketplace, I have very bad ADD and if something is not directly in front of me, and the reason why I brought it up is because Bobby literally talked to me about it yesterday. So I'm like, it's fresh in my head. And I'm like, Sherry probably did tell me about the marketplace. And I just totally, it totally just poofed out of my brain because that's how I work. Um, but uh, I, do think that, I do think rather than creating more tools, uh, maybe the next step for me in this independent research is seeing what tools are already available um, and updating them and co-opting them and almost commandeering them to fit um, all these other all these other uh, spaces that we feel are lacking. I'm gonna make a note of that. Okay. Any, any, sorry. Um, is, is there anything else before we move on? Megan? Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to ask anybody if they had any other questions. Okay. All right. So, Megan, does this time work for you? Can you, you guys hear me? Yes. Ah, beans. <laughs> My internet. <laughs> okay. What we'll do is we'll move on now. Sorry, did anybody like say anything? I didn't hear no, I was just wondering if this time works better for you for the next couple of months. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I have this um, I have this doctor's thing that I have to go to for the next 12 weeks. So yeah. this time this time is good. And I'm sorry again, like for the inconvenience, but uh, it's only for 12 weeks, 12 more that's, weeks. No worries. That's that's fine. Yeah. Um, Okay, so now we'll move on to um, economic development update with Ben. Sure, um, just thought I'd share a few things going on uh, over the last month or so since we last uh, chatted. <clears throat> um, I was talking to Libby earlier in the, in the week uh, or last week even about uh, the accommodation study that we, uh, that we completed last uh, year. And um, we did that through a consultant uh, uh, special specialization in specializing in uh, hotel feasibility studies and uh, uh, the revenue and the, and the occupancy and looking at all those things down to the, to the nitty gritty and how it uh, correlates into a certain community. So uh, we did that over the course of, of 2020. Things really got going uh, sort of around Canada Day and when uh, they were actually able to get down here and do a tour of the uh, community. Um, the report is up online. It's about 120, 50 pages, something like that. All sorts of data, all sorts of information. Um, I know uh, Councillor Anderson, Mayor Ostrander and Councillor Rowley have been uh, brief or not briefed on it have been uh, have been I've, I've reported on it to them uh, quite a bit over the last number of months so they're very familiar with it too so I won't go over the whole thing but basically it uh, it highlights three different locations throughout the community where in which a hotel could and would work uh, one being a, a waterfront destination one being a 401 uh, corridor uh, location and the last and uh, would be kind of a, a commercial center uh, and, and, and the location they point out is along Elizabeth, Elizabeth Street sort of in between their recreation area and uh, the no frills uh, development there. So uh, those are the three locations they deem would make sense in Brighton. Um, occupancy rates would be down and they and they don't expect kind of the hotel industry to get back to normal till sometime in the tw uh, 2024 um, kind of area. They in the report, you know, it definitely lends itself to the understanding of 
you know, May, June, July, August, uh, even into September are, are going to be very strong months uh, into the 90% occupancy rates throughout those months. Now, where, where a region such as ours will have trouble and where Brighton will have trouble will be in the, uh, in the, in the shoulder seasons. So your November's your Januarys, your Februarys, your Marches um, would be down. So that 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 that's the part of the data that the investor really has to look at and has to 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 understand how am I going to uh, how am I going to have enough constant revenue either through corporate or through things like sport tourism uh, to make this to make this worthwhile. So. That's uh, kind of a, a high level view of the accommodation study. I have, um, I have been in touch with franchise developers. Um, I have been in touch with private property owners that are open to the idea of uh, investing in a hotel or selling to a uh, franchise. Um, but these things are very preliminary and they're very confidential. So I can't really get into it too heavily. So um, since the report has been softly promoted, since it's been up online, I've, I've had three really, really cool phone calls and, and, and meetings regarding hotels. And um, it's opened my mind to understanding how the whole industry works and that there is interest in this community. Um, just to keep moving on here, um, throughout January, I completed three uh, grant documents, one for the industrial park uh, sign that we're looking to install uh, sometime in 2021 that would uh, be directional signage for the businesses inside the uh, Sharp Road Industrial Park, uh, as well as the first phase along Whiteless Drive and all the businesses in there. Um, we also did a uh, same, the red funding uh, through, uh, through OMAFRA. Uh, we did one for the Casey's Lane uh, revitalization. So that's a partnership uh, with the DBIA. They were co-applicants in the grant, as well as uh, Public Works was, was, uh, was a big part of writing that grant as well. So we're looking for funding to help with both of those projects um, that would make huge uh, quick wins, I think, in the community, both from a uh, uh, business exposure span standpoint and as well as a softer kind of revitalization to the downtown that doesn't involve huge infrastructure dollars and uh, replacing sidewalks and pipes and all those things. So, uh, and then the last grant I completed this month was a, a summer student grant for the uh, economic development and tourism department that would help me with a whole mirage of things and, uh, uh, really help uh, promote our tourism-based businesses and and um, the communications um, expectations that I've uh, that I've put on myself to follow to, to make sure people in the community are are uh, informed and uh, so lots of cool things happening there. Um, the uh, over the last week or so, we've opened uh, two outdoor rinks in the community. Um, you're probably wondering why outdoor rinks are being talked about in an economic development meeting. But to me, this all sort of is part and parcel with one another. If you show that your community offers uh, above and beyond services, offers amenities, um, it catches the eye of people that are looking to relocate, whether it's their family, whether it's a business. And uh, this is a really good feel good story. It, it promotes mental health. It promotes exercise in a, in a time where uh, in a time where things are really, really difficult on a lot of people. Um, you know, it offers something to fill that gap for all those kids that are in figure skating and in hockey that are so uh, part of the uh, Canadian and Ontario uh, culture that just, you know, there's no hockey programs being run this year. There's no, uh, figure skating programs being ran this year. Uh, an athlete that maybe um, participates in basketball, but is a good skater, has an opportunity to go uh, skating, you know, it, it fits into so many different ways of life. So we're really proud of that. Um, council had the foresight to get on this in the, in the fall and start talking about it and getting the dollars in place. And 
luckily the, the 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 weather finally cooperated in late January, and hopefully we can get a good solid month out of these rinks. And uh, right now we're pretty restricted on on how many folks are allowed on the rinks um, at a time, but uh, hopefully as restrictions ease, we can get more people out at the same time. But uh, people are being great. They're wearing their mask. They're wearing a helmet. Um, and uh, they're spacing themselves and it's been a really good start to, to that project. I thank the fire department and uh, Jim Miller over at Recreation that really uh, put the put the legwork into this. So um, yeah, that's kind of a, a few points over the last uh, couple of weeks since we met. Um, we are working on brownfields. Um, my job right now is to have something for you for the March meeting that will outline the incentives uh, that the municipality is looking at uh, offering. And I'm, I'm working on those incentives with, uh, with Paul that you met last meeting and uh, putting a little package together that would then turn into a report to council, uh, hopefully in the early spring. So um, that's kind of the brownfield. I know Emily uh, found another property uh, um, we had a, a short conversation in, in about a minus 20 outdoor day, so we, we couldn't get too far into detail, but I, I think I think it's really the only one we, we uh, the one that uh, Emily uh, sort of uh, brought to my attention was the only one we didn't really have. So I think in total there's going to be six that we that we're very aware of and uh, and we're going to start developing that that plan throughout this month and should have a little report for you on that in, in March. Uh, that's it for me. I know Libby has another little uh, idea and thought that I also have some more background information on too. So we, we can wait for Libby to bring that as well. But I'll let, that's kind of the economic development update. I can, I can allow for questions or I can allow for Emily to kind of talk about that last property she discovered, whatever the chair would like. Emily, did you want to add to that? Um, I can, I can, I can. I think I can answer. I think I'm speaking with the one on Lakeshore uh, Ben. Is that the one yeah. that we're talking about? Yeah, an old uh, municipal dump. I think, Brian, you might know exactly where that one is as well. And uh, the fact that you say there's now six Ben, I think that sounds pretty pretty close to what I remember from a few years ago when we uh, initially spoke about uh, brownfields. I think it's got to be eight or ten years ago. Brian, you might remember as well. We did have a list from our planning department, but uh, I know speaking with Paul, he hasn't been able to find that. But yeah, I think the other one would be the uh, the one, the old municipal dump on, uh, on the corner of Lakeshore. So um, good to add that to the list and I look forward to um, your report, Ben. Okay, well, great, thank you. And um, so the next item is um, Chamber of Commerce update, Cherry. Yeah, I just have a question for Ben first before I go. Um, you said that one of your grant applications was for revitalization of Casey's Lane. Is Casey's Lane Veterans Way? Is that no? The no. Casey, Casey's Lane is the alleyway between the new dental office and the uh, dollar store. Okay. Thanks. And which leads you out into the to the whole other development out well, by the, the liquor store. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, guys. it's it's not very wide. Um, I, I can send you, you yeah, I can send you kind of the concepts, but the concepts are new planters, new benches, new lighting, um, kind of fix up the kind of fix up the uh, surface to make it a little more accessible, and uh, yeah, it, it'll it'll hopefully allow for easier easier accessibility and more ambiance uh, in the evening and through the day um, for people exploring our downtown. Can I just make a little comment on that or ask a question, Ben? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that, as, as you said, the DBIA is the co-sponsor. Um, I believe that our treasurer is still looking for some information um, from uh, Public Works, from Samantha and Preston. Could you just pass along that message that he's still waiting for an, uh, an email with uh, some information from them? That's, sure. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Go oh, ahead, Mayor. <laughs> oh, we have more comments. I'm sorry. Um, Let, I you, I just was making a joke about uh, Casey's Lane being the uh, the golden trail to the liquor store. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all. It's maybe a 
early for that joke. I don't know. <laughs> We're destined. That's our attractions. <laughs> okay, Sherry, did you have anything okay. else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for indulging me. Um, yeah, so the Chamber of Commerce were busy as usual. I don't have a lot of new stuff based from my last report, but I will tell you that the awards are moving forward. I'm going to send Tom a few things after the meeting today that he can forward to everybody. And one of those things is going to be nomination form for uh, Business Achievement Awards. I'm going to ask everyone in this group to nominate in every category, please. <laughs> So uh, that's, that's moving forward with the hopes that the um, virtual event will go live in June. Okay, so that's what we're gearing for. Um, the chamber is developing a new website and you heard Doug say, I've asked him for some photos. I've also reached out to Ben and Northumberland County. If anybody has beautiful photos of the community that they think should be online, I'm happy to receive them. We need a high-res image, though. Um, our membership drive has started for 2021, and we're getting new members. The Chamber seems to be getting a lot of traction and attention right now. I'm going to send the member benefits flyer that has been created by our digital support specialist, our student. I'll send that so that everyone can see it as well. We have set the date for our annual general meeting. It's going to be on March 23rd. It will be a virtual event, obviously. At this event, well, others are invited to attend. There's no cost. Um, our members, of course, are the ones who will be voting on any resolutions that come forward at that meeting. So if you want to vote, you need to be a member. Um, we just found out last week that our... Um, Proposal to Cramie Township was approved. Their budget seems to be finalized. So I got to say, I'm pretty happy that we are working pretty closely with both of our municipalities this year. It means we can do more is basically what that means. Our map sites have been identified by Brighton Digital Archives. So there's three pieces that I want to send out to this committee after, and that would be the nomination form, the member benefits form, and the list of sites. If you could look at those historical sites that are being recommended by Brighton Digital Archives for two things. Are they good choices? Is there something missing that you thought should have been there? So that's what I'm asking for from this group. Just give me feedback on those sites. The last thing on my list is the marketplace. And yes, Megan is right. We are still promoting that. I still think it's a great place for businesses even if they already have e-commerce capabilities on their own website, they can drive traffic back to it. It means a collaborative effort for the whole community. So if anybody wants more information on that, our site developer is running weekly webinars and we're, rescheduled. we're scheduling one for next week right now. I'm not sure if it's gonna be Tuesday or Wednesday, but next week there will be a webinar that you can attend, that you can talk directly with the site developer if you're interested, I'll forward our e-news out to this group as well. Just make a note of that. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention, I know I, I suggested Northumberland County as guest speakers here. I wonder if there's any benefit to inviting RTO8 ECO or EDO for this. Um, they... Obviously, Bay Aquini Marketing Board is in RTO 9. We are not. That doesn't mean that none of the funding from there can come to us. But what it does mean is that the programs that RTO 8 has directly apply to us. And one of the things that we were doing when I sat on that board of directors was a customer service training for businesses. And I know Doug mentioned this as a way to hook in to the park traffic. That program was offered out to businesses, it's probably three or four years ago now. I wonder if they still have that program in place and if we can start promoting it to our businesses now so that they can use their downtime to get themselves more familiar with how customer service can actually change the face of a community. It really matters. I hear it all the time. 
So anyway, I was just going to suggest RTO8 as one of our potential future guests, Ben. Can I ask a question? Sure. I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> uh, Sherry, you, uh, with the map, the heritage map, you're dealing with the uh, digital archives. Have you talked in it to the heritage committee, our heritage committee, about any of these properties or anything? No. I, I was working with Brighton Digital Archives. Are you on the committee, Ron? No, I'm familiar with it. It's uh, okay. Laura. Laura's on that heads up, not heads it up, but she's our representative on that uh, committee. I think okay. if you overlook them, you might be missing. Uh, Thank you. I think you should talk to them anyhow. I think they're very informed. They look at it from a different perspective. Uh, the true heritage of the properties. That's, Somewhat, uh, I think uh, you're going to get the best of both worlds if you talk to both of them. Perfect. I will include Laura on. Do you know who the chair is of that committee? Uh, Dave. Dave Cutler. Dave Cutler. Dave Cutler. Dave Cutler. Okay. Yeah, please don't uh, overlook them. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Sherry, is there anything else before we move on to new business? Not from me. Okay. May, I ask a, may, I ask a, may I ask a question, Libby? Yes. Uh, Sherry, uh, a question and a comment really. Uh, Sherry, the um, marketplace initiative, is there a cost uh, for people to sign up? Yeah. Or would we yes, when a business registers with uh, the Brighton Crammy marketplace, they get a storefront. So you have your own storefront on the marketplace. There is a cost associated with that depending on how much exposure you wanna have on that marketplace. So yes, there is a cost for having a storefront and there is the fee for processing payments. So just like a credit card, right? Okay. There's a, so it actually has e-commerce capability. So I, I think the beauty of it, I describe it, Emily, as Shopify meets Amazon. So it's actually a bigger marketplace with a lot more products on it when all the stores are on there but you totally control your own storefront like a Shopify. It's not like you're turning over your product and someone else is taking all the profits from it. Correct. Okay. Against okay. no Amazon, but it, so there is a fee and it depends on how many products they want to load onto the site. Right. Okay. Thanks for that. So I can pass that on. And my other comment I wanted to take on what you said regarding RT08, um, I think that is something that we should connect with. I know the deputy mayor and I, a couple of years ago, went to uh, yeah. some kind of, well, I think you were there too, Sherry, weren't you? Yeah. We went to Peterborough, or, yeah, Peterborough, we were up there. Um, and I, I think, yeah, we need to tap into that. I'm not sure right now who the local representative is. I think somebody from the Codrington Community Association. Margaret Farmers, That's right, from the Mar Margaret. Farmers Market. She would know, that's right. So, um, yeah, I think some, I think another um, something to tap into, that's for sure. For sure. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the chamber? Ron? No? Quick question. Yep. Okay. No, they're doing great. Okay. Chamber's doing great work. <laughs> what, time, what time is your AGM, Sherry? We don't have a time yet. I'm assuming they're going to pick morning. <laughs> You'll let us know, eh? <laughs> I'm going to say, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, they just decided on the date Thursday, so I'll have to, uh, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to do 9 a.m. because that's what they've been doing, so, but I don't know. Okay, so we'll move on to um, new business, and as Ben suggested earlier, I, I do have an item I just want to throw out for discussion. Um, I really don't know much about the history of this, so I'm anxious to hear what Ben has to say. But I just wondered what everyone thought of the brand, uh, the Brighton, actually, the, the logo. And this is the logo that's, you know, right on top of your, your agenda here. Um, it, it is, a, it is a, a great symbol for uh, downtown, people come to, uh, this community will look for that sort of thing, like the history you're talking about, Sherry, and you know the just just the ambiance in the downtown. But do, does it actually still say, or you know, does it say 
this is a great place to come and do business. This is a place um, that's growing and progressive. Is is this? Are there any comments on that? Or maybe maybe I could ask Ben if you could fill us in on anything you learned about the uh, the brand. Ben, you need to on. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I. Uh, I. <sighs> I guess if if this is something we want to um, really start going at, that's a that's a product of this committee. Um, there's a couple there's a couple ways to go. Um, we can look at a report or a, or a motion or something. Tom will have to help me out on that. Where uh, we look at the entire brand for the municipality. Uh, we look at the tagline, we look at the logo, um, and we look at creating something different or refreshing what we already have. Um, the other option could be, do we come up with some sort of offshoot um, of the current brand, the current corporate logo, the current corporate brand, which the tagline is where the past greets the future, um, and do we just come up with some sort of economic development slash tourism uh, logo and brand that would be an offshoot of the of the one that you're referring to, Libby? Um, Hastings County just uh, launched their new uh, brand, Wild Wildly Authentic, and uh, they came up with a logo and the Wildly Authentic brand tagline to go with it. And, uh, you know, it's quite a process. Um, so you, you hire a special, a special, uh, expertise consultant in branding and in graphic design and creating logos. And they work through a whole slate of, uh, local stakeholders that, uh, that can provide insight in what they believe, uh, the community is and what all it offers. And they create the tagline and the brand kind of first. And then as they work through those things, they created the logo um, last, actually. And, you know, Hastings County is a little bit different um, where they have this, this pretty large 14 municipality uh, area to cover when it comes to tourism and economic development. So having their own little off the, off the beaten path sort of departmental logo away from the normal Hastings County logo that you see on all their trucks and their ambulances and all that kind of stuff is a little bit more financially or kind of a little bit more appropriate, I guess, with a, with the upper tier municipality that size. So I guess for me, if we're going to look at um, the entire brand as a whole and the logo from a corporate perspective, this is, that's probably bigger than this, than this committee, but it, 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 it should start here. It could start here and it could, um, it could be a vital stakeholder in, in that process because we, you know, we could ensure that it is well represented from an economic development and tourism uh, perspective. Um, I can tell you these things are about 60 grand to, uh, to do, and that's not counting um, the, all of the new decal you would put on all of your facilities and all of your trucks and all of your stationery. Um, so you can probably count on another, you know, Ten twenty five thousand dollars for all of that work too. So, you know, a hundred thousand dollar project is, is is about a is a fair estimate of going through a rebranding process. So, um, is the money in the budget to do it this year? No. Um, could we start looking at um, Could we start looking at funding opportunities? Maybe, but I think the first step would be getting an understanding of where council is on this topic. That's all I really had to say. Um, we don't seem to utilize the where the past greets the future. Maybe part of that's my fault. Maybe I haven't been 
getting that uh, tagline, that brand out there enough in our, in our marketing uh, in the last, since I've been here. But I think, I think it's kind of outdated itself as well. And in a lot of ways, I think the, uh, I love, I love the logo. I love the colors. Um, but I don't, but I don't know if it needs to be refreshed to create that new twenties um, and uh, sort of image that we're not just here to be a retirement community. We want to find a way to attract those people that are still in their thirties and forties um, that want to raise a family here and uh, offering opportunities to work from home. If you need to jump into the city for a day a week, you could do that from here. Uh, if you want to start a business, you can do that from here. Um, we also want to have that appeasing enough logo to uh, get out there when we are back to the world of attracting people from the United States and attracting people from the GTA and Southwestern Ontario. So um, just a few thoughts. Um, maybe I'll let one of our political representatives uh, take over from here or Libby, if you have a few more thoughts on it. Yeah, no, I, and, and, I, and it is an expensive process. It's just as expensive to develop the brand as it is to um, redo everything that you have. So it is an expensive process. But is it giving the right message for us now? If, you know, we're the past. You don't even need to read the rest of it. It's the past. And we need to be a forward-thinking municipality. And so I, I am curious as to what, um, those on council and the mayor might think about it and the rest of the committee is to do you think it's fine or do you think maybe it is a time to refresh and come up with something a bit more uh, progressive and modern uh, you know meeting the meeting the needs our needs of the future so anybody interested in commenting on that I'll, I'll make a comment um, I, I totally agree Libby I totally agree and I also agree with Ben's comments that it is getting a little old. Um, I believe the mayor and I sat through the last rebranding project. And I'm not, you did not, were you not on that one? Okay, lucky you. Um, Good for you. <laughs> it, uh, it did not go well. Sherry, I believe you were there. You were there. And I think, well, Alicia was there at the time. It did not go well. And I'm not sure in this day and time if it would, be really popular either. I'm not going to make any more comment than that. I do, agree. I'm wondering if a small building step would be, Libby, if we started just with the economic development with, with this committee, with working with uh, the industrial park, with, you know, with, you know, the focus on from this group, and then maybe uh, build on our successes and go from there. That would just be, um, it was a long drawn out process. It cost a lot of money and it fell flat at the end of the day. And uh, I'm not so sure if there's, I'm not so sure if that package is still on the shelf then. I don't know if you have it, if you can dust it, it, it is still there. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty, it was a pretty rough road to, uh, to travel for those, for that, for that process. So like I say, starting small might be better. I'm, I'm almost certain that putting a hundred thousand dollar price tag on anything at this stage is not going to fly. Um, those are my comments, but I, I do like the idea that if we could start small, I, and, and, I think that would be a great. We may be able to, I, I don't know if you can piecemeal a brand and a logo as to economic development. I see in other municipalities, even Belgium and Quinty West, where you have a downtown um, brand, which is fine. Uh, or maybe what we have is fine. Um, but in terms of the community, the highway signage and that sort of thing, um, I, I don't know if you want to have too many mixed messages in there, one for economic development, one for town of law, one for downtown or, or whatever. But, it, you know, when you did it in the past, did you do it with a consultant? Oh, yeah. Yes, we did. And it had a big, it was a hefty price tag. I'm not sure yeah. we would have reached the 100,000, but uh, yeah. There, there no, were significant I mean, dollars. You can, you can. I've been involved in, in so many branding projects, and you can. I mean, you can get a, you can get a, a good team together and a good consultant for maybe even 2025. Um, but um, it, it does take a will. It takes the will amongst uh, council and the leaders to want to present a new image. So 
Um, Mr. Mayor, do you have any comments on that? Usually. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, I, I agree. It is time to, um, to rebrand and certainly, certainly take a look at our, our tagline. Um, and not to uh, not to throw past councils under the bus, but I didn't live in Brighton when that tagline uh, was initiated. I was I was living in in Scarborough, working in Toronto, uh, and would come home and joke with my stepfather, who was on council, uh, that Brighton is the place where the past greets the future, but doesn't want much to do with us. Um, and and. I don't think that's true anymore. I think the future really wants a lot to do with Brighton and, um, you know, we can't just greet it and, and, and allow it to go on. So, you know, I, I don't want to, I think in many ways, that's probably why we don't use that tagline or we don't see it as much as we once did. It's not on the signs anymore when you enter the community. And uh, that wasn't a political decision. I think it was an operational decision when they replaced the signs. I was certainly pleased that the tagline disappeared though, uh, when that happened. Um, part of the reason I think, uh, Council Rowley, that the, the rebrand from uh, 10, 10 or so years ago didn't work was there, the political will wasn't there. Um, the, the majority of council or certainly the, the extremely uh, loud minority of council of the day did not and would not support the rebranding from the get go. Um, but part of the problem was that the result of that rebranding was a ripoff of, of Brighton England's rebranding from a couple of years before that. And so it was an, it was easy fodder. It was easy to say for the, for that vocal opposition to say, oh, we've just spent a ton of dough and all we've done is, is stolen someone else's sign, um, <clears throat> which was, you know, just, it was, that was just bad form on the part of the consultant uh, at the end of the day. And, you know, just it made it really easy to take that twenty-five or $30,000 and, and literally flush it. And, and I thought that was really, really unfortunate because the time was ripe 10 years ago to do that rebranding and it's still ripe today. But I, I, I do, I am concerned, I think, as Councillor Rowley is about the political will. So uh, I would want to see this as a, as, um, sort of endorsed by council before we went down the road. I would want to know that we had the, uh, the, the um, full cooperation of, of council, or at least a, a good majority of council before we did this uh, and have a full understanding of what the cost was going to be, because that might be uh, what puts the brakes on right now. Um, what we don't want to do is, is appear to be spending a lot of money on a, on a cosmetic uh, what people will think of as a cosmetic uh, initiative when, when there's businesses that are struggling and we could be spending money helping them do that. I will say that the logos for downtown Brighton, the DBIA, and the logos for the Chamber of Commerce are, are great. Uh, they're, they're lively, they're bright, um, and they're, they're uplifting. So I think if we were to have a branding exercise that included those organizations and what they've been doing, we'd come up with something uh, that was uh, innovative and uh, spoke to who Brighton is today and what Brighton will be moving forward. So, you know, I, I guess I'm talking, once again, talking about both sides of my mouth um, on this, but, uh, you know, to, to, to speak to Mr. Hagerman's uh, comment, I think it needs to come from council and offer direction to this committee to, to move the, the initiative forward. And I, I look forward to seeing something uh, in the near future so that we can start the process. And, and maybe um, if, if, this, if, if, if this is something that we do go forward with as a recommendation to council, we may want to look at having somebody in to explain the benefits of it because this would be a benefit to business. We could spend money in other ways to help businesses, but this could make a significant impact to increase the image and the profile of, of Brighton. So we might want to uh, look at having somebody come and make a presentation, maybe somebody who is not necessarily going to be in the running to bid on it, but somebody just to say, this is what a, you know, a, a brand can do for your municipality. Um, I think that's a great idea. And uh, I would um, maybe suggest that the chair of this committee might be that person. No. <laughs> I can certainly find somebody for you. <laughs> I mean, it, it is it is so important. Image is so important. Um, 
if, 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 you're, if you're coming into, just think about the first time you drove into Brighton and you saw that, what did you think? What was your image? What did you feel about the municipality? Did you think this is a, you know, this is, this is a, a, a place where I might like to live? Well, actually I did, but it wasn't the logo that, that I've heard, you know, people, is Megan still there? I, I would be interested. Yeah, I would be interesting in knowing what the, the you know, what her and impressions were looking more. Yeah, to, you know, having I'm actually here, so I do have to. Yeah, go ahead, Megan. Are you there? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's hi. Me. Sorry, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little spotty. I am still here. Yep, I sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I so, do have to I do yeah, sorry, as, I do as, have as to an, leave. Okay. As a newcomer to Brighton, I was just wondering yeah. what your opinion was on the, the the logo and what it means to a new investor or a new business person or a new resident. Yeah. I'm so happy you asked. Um because <laughs> I mean I don't know if anybody knows this, but I did go to I have a degree in design and um studio art, so like art is my not just my profession, it's literally my specialty. Like I've, I've, I'm well read there. Um, and I've been making notes while you guys have been talking because of course I, I can't really, I don't have the infrastructure right now to respond well. Um, but from my perspective, uh, from the logo, I mean, when I first moved to Brighton, I did feel very um, left out. I felt very, as a young person, I felt like um, it was kind of a town that wasn't going to accept me until I reached a certain age, um, which was not a great feeling. And then I started to realize um, that there are a lot of people here. And when I say young, I mean um, pre-retirement, right? So people who are still like working professionals, they have kids under 18, um, you know, they're, they, they want to be involved. And I think that when the logo, there's a way that you can modernize the logo to kind of take that sort of because I do think Brighton has a beautiful history and that we should celebrate that um and don't get me wrong everybody I love Brighton now even though it took me a few years um it, I, I'm to, I've totally come around um I think what happens when people see uh it again to use an anecdote it's kind of like when you go to a restaurant that was really popular in the 70s with the guys in, you know, the bow ties and the, you know, the monsieur and like the stuccoed walls and the wrought iron. They're not very popular today because they're stuck in the past, right? Now, the food still might be really good, just like how Brighton is still a totally wonderful place to live, but it's the image that does throw people off. And I've been making notes on what would be a good idea to, to brand. And I think that like, you know, the Bay of Quinty, tourism and stuff have totally nailed it they've got that clean concise look I mean we're, we're moving into the future things are becoming streamlined more efficient um, but I think that there's a way to totally marry that old world um, kind of feel with the sort of the clean conciseness of the, the future um, and again yeah like I only I didn't realize that Brighton's logo was where the past meets the future I didn't even realize that was what it was until, I mean, <laughs> until after living here for about a year. Um, and again, I, I agree with you, Libby, that, you know, if we lead with the past, that's all the people are going to stop reading right there. Right. And they're going to be like, ah, poo, right. And, and move on. Um, I think other places that, you know, I lived in Halifax before I came here and Halifax did a, does a really good job at marrying their kind of old history with, you know, uh, new infrastructure. I mean, they've, they've dropped the ball a lot too, but I think we should look at places that if we're going to talk about like even just entertaining the idea of rebranding rather kind of like what I was saying about, you know, what Sherry does with the um, chamber rather than starting from the ground up, there is a way where we can look at what other people have done without totally ripping them off. Um, like was done with the last branding. Um, so yeah, I, I think that maybe it would be nice to, uh, just just so you know, I wrote down what might be a good idea for a logo or, or just a brand identity, which would be like if there was an individual clean 
logo that was designed for like all the different branches that make Brighton work. And then the Brighton logo was an amalgam of all of those things. That might be, might be something. I don't know. I'm going to just, I'm going to sketch up some logos. I'm going to put you under, I, yeah, I think I, that might be premature, but I'm going to put you under the yes category for now. I'm just doing a, yeah. a tally. And I, I'm, I'm all for having a consultant come in and do this if, if we proceed it, but we need to have that kind of, of input and, and thoughts. Um, I'd like to hear. Um, and Mike. just before I go, I want to make. Oh, I got to go. <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to know what your opinion was on this. Sorry. Sorry. Can I just say one thing before I go? Mm -hmm. um, is that I know that money is a big concern and as it should be. Uh, but um, something that might be interesting, even just to put together a package further down the line, because obviously we're not going to get to this right away. But Loyalist College Marketing Program did a branding package for one of my businesses. And some of them were not so great, but um, there were two or three that were like totally blew me out of the water. And they just, these kids do it for grades. Um, so it would be interesting to see maybe if we even got them, the kids to kind of design, I say kids, they're grownups. Um, but you know, the young people, if we got them to even just spitball some ideas for us, totally free um and they do it for a grade and you know there are some really amazing um these are kids who want to be consultants someday right so they take it very seriously um so yeah just just a thought maybe. um i'm gonna go thanks everybody Bye. Thanks, Megan. uh mike I, I was just wondering what your opinion was on this if you could on you could you need to uh, you need to all right there you go um I guess from what I can s visually talking to people or phys physically, there is a real concept of newcomers coming into this community that they don't feel welcomed. Uh, where we, you know, just read all the comments on a senior's home in this area alone, but then so much negativity as an investor, you don't want the negativity coming into the community. You want to feel welcome. If an investor is willing to put $40 million into a community, man, we should be rolling the red carpet out there. And I never sensed that when I came here 15 years ago. I was a new guy coming into town, but I also picked my spot. I came from a small community, so I understood that small towns have a different heartbeat in a larger urban setting. And uh, you have to be part of the community. You have to get involved in the community and the community will reward you uh, at the end but you have to realize that you are one of the people of the community that's why i was so adamant on living in this community when i came to this community that it was the important most important part i could have lived anywhere and community but that was not the image i wanted to have it was down to the image of what vehicle i was driving to feel part of the, the community I wanted to be one of the community. So that was, you know, and as for welcoming new people, that's what we have to do. Like we're all, I used to use the logic, logic we all put our pants on the same way every day, one leg at a time. We're not, I'm no different than anybody else. And we all should be treated that way. And I, that's just my perspective on it. And as for rebranding, where the past beats the future, <laughs> no, reads the future, that, that's old news. Like let's, we want the young community. I have two young kids that will not live in this community because their profession won't choose them to live in this community. That's just my perspective. Thank you. Interesting. Uh, Councilor Anderson, are you still there? Well, maybe we should drop that on anything that we can drop right now. And uh, like you said, some of the signs don't even have it on. So maybe it can be gradually dropped off. And then we, when we find a new, a new slogan and uh, it all comes apart. But I'll just say, be cautious now on expense and on, I know there's new signs ordered for Public Works has got new signs to replace a lot of the old signs that are in town. Uh, ben, you're working on a big sign project. Um, so all those things should be, are we gonna put the money into all those things and, uh, and then tear them all down in a year from now? Or should this be in a strategic plan that we work now, plan now, get the public, a little bit of public input I don't know. I don't like, I'm not suggesting contests and all that stuff, but um, I'll leave that to Ben. But maybe 
two years down the road, but with the plan to get there. But I think that you should be concerned, Ben, with new signage being put in. And Public Works has told me that they have new signs coming for uh, some of them that are beaten up on the side of the road. They're steel signs too, not wooden signs. So uh, maybe the mayor most knows more about that and we should think about that. But I, I agree. I like the mini, the mini update of the, uh, I like that plan uh, more than the total rebranding because of costs. And I, and I think the original logo is more along the lines of the the apple behind the mayor's head there. That's, you know, uh, that was our identity then. And then we went and chopped all the apple trees down, but now we're growing them again. So, so, and then, you so know, you're gonna get a lot of kickback from different people. But. And, and, that, and that may be, and, that, and that's why it's good to have this process lit, led by a consultancy firm rather than, um, rather than this committee or the municipality. But maybe this logo can be tweaked, take the tagline out, modernize it, get all the swirly bits out of it. It may be as simple as that. I'm not suggesting that all the signs need to come down and, you know, different, you know, but maybe, maybe can it just repaint it? We, you know, maybe something can be done so that this isn't the huge expense that we think. I just wanted to bring it up so we could, I could determine whether this is something that there is an appetite for. And if that's the case, you know, if there is a closed meeting of council and you want to have somebody come and just um, e explain what the process uh, could mean to a community, I'm happy to organize that. But I just wanted to bring it up at this time just to see what what the thoughts were. Did I miss anybody, Sherry? Um, well, I'm yes, I, I would um, chime in that obviously all those years ago when I donated all that time to the effort, that was my statement that I think we need to change. Okay. At this point, because of the, the discussion that we're having here, I agree with the mayor that maybe spending the money in that direction right now might not be well received by the community. Dropping the tagline is certainly a good step in the right direction because that tagline is older than anyone on this call probably. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm in favor of us taking a look at that for sure. I didn't realize that the logo that was presented before had been a ripoff. That's the first time I've heard it. I mean, I've got a file that thick of background information if we want to see it. And I think I've even got the apron. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Mr. Mayor, did you have any final comment on that? My comment is only a cautionary tale about the wheels of government and how quickly or not they move forward. Um, anyone who thinks that a rebranding will take six months starting now is uh, not going to happen. So Ron's comment of, you know, do we do this? And then in a year now, we're, it, it'll be more than a year. And so for the, the for three of us sitting around the table, some who may be looking to seek re-election in 2022, I'll just offer that cautionary tale as well. Um, where in the process do do we want to be as we as we do we want this to be an election issue? That's I guess at the end of the day, what I'd ask uh, my two council friends is do do we want this to be an election issue? And I'd also remind everyone that this particular exercise or concept of rebranding is not. A strategic priority for Brighton at the moment. Now we're going to do a strategic plan refresh. Uh, we might get it on the on the table, but I, I would, I think I would want to say, you know, is this something we want a new council to do in a couple of years? Let's get through COVID. Let's find out what economic recovery looks like, and, and this can be all be part and parcel of our economic recovery. Um, suggesting a rebrand and a refresh, that might be a good way to roll this out. As a, you know, we want to come out strong and vital, that might put a really good positive spin on this. But Mike, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I'm, I'm always floored by the uh, incredibly positive uh, comments I see when, uh, when someone comes to want to invest in our community on social media. It, and I'm being sarcastic, you know that. Um, it's... Uh, it's unbelievable to me that someone would bring a $40 million seniors home built to this community, which will offer 30 or more full-time employment positions. And all, and all you get is, well, no one's going to be able to afford it. Well, you know what? There are people who will afford it. <laughs> 
And there are people living here right now who will not chime in on that stream on Facebook who will afford it. I guarantee you that place will be 80% sold out before I cut the ribbon on it. And I also guarantee that at least 75% of that 80% will be Brightonians who want to move in there because there's a ton of folks. I'm sorry, I'm going on a rant here. I, I just drove me crazy last night. Uh, there's I, totally, a I totally agree with you, though. That's uh, exactly it. I mean, the, the negativity, it just it's, it's overwhelming at times. And, you know, a few months ago, uh, there were people wanting to have two of those uh, retirement residents here and at the time wondering how that was all going to fly. You're right. We'll fill up one with no with no trouble at all. But I, uh, back to the branding thing is is there opportunity at some point, Ben, even to look at a, you know, some kind of uh, uh, program, some kind of funding program, just to do the exercise, if nothing else, that we could just all get our heads around something like that, that we can, um, uh, you know, look at this, maybe not today, maybe not next week, but, but that we could start with some stepping stones to maybe at some point move it forward. And there, there may be some money for for the rebranding of municipalities now because of um, you know because of COVID and everybody sort of needs to get out there hit the ground running again. There may be programs. I'm not sure, um, but I, you know, as I said, I just wanted to put it out there. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll ask Ben what the next step is to that. If you bring it to you know uh, uh, a closed meeting of council or Libby, I think the next step would be for this committee to make a recommendation to council. Okay. Right. And, and and then let council get that on the strategic plan because it needs to be a strategic priority for it to have have legs so let's get this this committee to make a recommendation to council to start a rebranding process and then we're going to hold that refresh my hope is before the end of february i'm just trying to figure out what the provincial emergency is going to look like so is this something that needs a motion then no can i ask you a question of the mayor can that be done uh at the strategic planning session rather than at a council meeting? Well, the strategic planning session will be a council meeting, but yeah. that's the answer. Absolutely. That's, well, that's where I would like to see it uh, done. But I would like this committee to tell council, we're recommending that you do this. We need to, this is this is forward momentum stuff and, and council needs to wrap its head around that through the strategic planning process. So do we, as, as Libby said, do we need a motion? I would certainly put my uh, signature on that motion if we can get it kind of within the next few council packages so that maybe when we do have our strategic planning. That, that, that I would second that, Emily. Right. I, would second, I would second that with Emily if, if we need to carry any of that information forward. Okay, so that's great. Um, Thank you for that conversation. And as, before we get into, well, I don't think there's a whole lot more, just our next meeting date. Is there any other new business? No, just thanks uh, Libby for bringing that. This is exactly what this committee's for and uh, um, to go along with the information sharing. Um, I think we're making some major headway here in only three months of this meeting even existing. So appreciate well, everyone's time. This is really, really good stuff. And again, if you if you need a, a, an expert outside of this committee that you know needs to uh, bring some information to bring some more clarity to the process, um, I can I'm sure I can find somebody to, to do that. So, so if there's if there's there's no more business, is that right? Any other new business anyone wants to bring up? Or we just can't seem to get below two hours, can we? But we're we're having some good discussions. Uh, is there any correspondence, Ben no. or? Sorry, nope. Um, so the next meeting date will be March the 4th. That's not a holiday for some reason, is it? No, March the 4th. No. So is that okay with everyone? March the 4th, set for the next right. meeting date? Okay. Right. And um, be, before we have a motion to adjourn, Tom, are you there, Tom? Hey. Uh, I was looking through the minutes and we had a motion to, do we need a motion to accept Doug's report as presented? I was looking at our minutes last time and we, I, I don't recall it, but we had a motion to accept the Chamber's report and um, the report of on the, on the Brownfield, I guess, oh, on, on Chris King. So do we need a motion to accept Doug's report? Um, yeah, so it's best practice to 
just to receive it for information, just to okay. have that motion on, on there. Um, um, okay. Obviously, for today, we're already past that. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, but so. for future. Okay, so yeah. all we need now is a motion to adjourn. I'll do that. Do we need a seconder for that, Tom? Yes. Okay, seconder. Emily? Libby, can I just make a comment on your comment regarding this meeting goes for two hours? Progress takes time. Hey, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm always worried. We took about two hours today. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. It's good. Thanks lots of comments, lots Mike. of good discussion. Mike, okay, thanks for your good. All right. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye.